oh, you've caught me again uh, reading a book. Uh, this time it's not a book about fishing, it's a, a detective story. I wonder, whenever you read a, a, a novel, are you tempted to, to read the last chapter just to find out how it all ends? I, I am. And uh, oft, often I do that. You can do that with the Bible. The beginning begins like this. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. But it ends like this. The book of Revelation. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take of the free gift of the water of life. Yes, he who testifies to these things say, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all of God's people. So the Bible begins with a, a, a love story. God creating the heavens and the earth, putting Adam and Eve uh, to look after the Garden of Eden. And it ends with another love story when Jesus comes back to take what is called the Bride of Christ, which is the Church of the Living Jesus Christ. And uh, one day we will be united with him in, in heaven either when we die or when he returns uh, to this earth. And in between, from Genesis to Revelation, there are fascinating stories. Stories of God's provision, God's care, God's commitment, God's love. There are warnings in there that, that tell us how we, we ought to live the, the right way. But there are answers to when we don't live the right way. For example, in 1 John 1 and verse 9, that's the first epistle, first letter of John, the Bible says this, If we confess our sins... God is just and able and will forgive us our sins. Now that's the good news. Good news is the gospel. The word gospel literally means the good news. So the gospel of John is the good news told by John. The gospel of Matthew is the good news told by Matthew. Now over the past few weeks I've been uh, quoting from this little booklet. Uh, it's called Amazing Exchange. But all I've been doing is reading to you the very last page, the end of the book. Uh, this morning I thought I might start reading you a uh, little bit from the beginning of the book, Amazing Exchange, subtitled Love, Freedom and Peace. You see, that's the good news. God wants us to experience love, he wants us to experience freedom, and he wants to experience peace. He promises rest in a troublesome world, and the world really is troubled at the moment, isn't it? Uh, stabbings in Birmingham a shooting in Suffolk, uh, all that's happening around the world politically, the COVID-19 uh, virus crisis, and some people are just so, so troubled and they need, need rest. Well, Jesus promises us rest, peace, love, and freedom. Jesus says this in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I wonder if you need rest this morning. I wonder if you are wearied by the trials and the tribulations and the troubles of this life. I wonder if you've been looking in the wrong places to find that rest. The Bible says that peace comes in and through Jesus Christ. Peace is not the absence of war. Peace is a person. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who so loved us that he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus, that if we believe in him, we should have that peace. We should have that everlasting life. Jesus said that if we come to him, he would set us free. Uh, John 8 verse 36 says this, If Jesus sets you free, you will be free indeed. But many of us are not free, are we? We are tied down by our own uh, lusts, our own uh, desires, our own temptations, our own habits. There are things that we do that we wish we, we didn't do. And we're, we're, we're bound by them. We may be addicted, may be addicted to alcohol, to uh, smoking, some people are addicted to pornography or lots of different things, the, the acquisition of possessions and none of these things will satisfy us, none of these things will give us peace because we were made in the image of God to know God and the only real way to peace is to know him personally and to allow him into our lives and so we may tr try lots of things but we will never be satisfied. Let me read you a couple of testimonies. Uh, this is from Shane Lynch uh, from Boys Own, uh, one of those uh, 
it used to be called a boy band, but they're now a, a man band, aren't they? Uh, but this is what Shane says. I had everything that money could buy, the million pound house, the Porsche. I thought, you're meant to be content. You're meant to be happy, but I wasn't. I still had this void inside that was confusing. It led me to drink in order to try and make life exciting, just to survive, but it didn't work. You see, we can try and fill that gap, that void, that, that lack of peace, that lack of freedom in our lives with lots of things, money and all the things that money can buy, but it will never ever satisfy. Here's another uh, personal story from Jason Robinson, a former England rugby player. He said this, I was extremely successful at my job. I was financially secure. Although the world was at my feet, it was crumbling. He quotes the Bible, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That describes exactly what happened to me when I became a Christian. I felt that a great burden had been lifted. You see, you can try lots of things, alcohol, drugs, sex, money, possessions, fast cars. But unless you really know God in and through Jesus, you're never truly going to be satisfied. You see, we'll never be truly satisfied until we are willing to face up to the fact that we need a saviour. And the good news is that God has sent us a saviour in and through Jesus Christ. For God so loved you that he sent Jesus that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. God is love and God loves you, no matter where you are, no matter what you may have done or are even doing at this moment in time, he really, really loves you. His love is unconditional. He just wants you to come and love him freely. You know, some people say, well, if God exists, why doesn't he make us love him? Well, that wouldn't be love, would it? If I put a gun to my wife and say, love me, then that's not love, that's coercion. What we need is free will and God desires that we freely surrender and give our love to him. And he truly, truly loves you. We often in our church read a, a little letter that we call the Father's love letter, God is our Father. I want to read you some extracts from it and all the things that I'm reading now are in the Bible. They're just all put together in the form of a love letter. It says this, my child, you are my child and I've made you in my image. You were not a mistake. I created your innermost being and I knitted you together in your mother's womb. I knew everything about you and I love you completely. I am not like you may imagine that I am. I am not distant or angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And I long to lavish my love on you because I am your loving father. The letter ends by saying this, I have always been your father. I will you now be my child. I am waiting for you. Love your father God. Now that's just a short extract of the father's love letter letter. If you'd like me to send you a full copy of it, I would be delighted to do that. Just email me uh, john at the well rbc.org. That's john at the well rbc.org. Give me your address and I'll, I'll send it uh, by return of post to you uh, with no obligation. I just love you uh, to receive it. You see, the truth is that God loves you. The truth is that God is really there and he is there uh, for you. He tries to show himself to us in lots of different ways, through those who believe in him, through those who pray for you. And you may know a Christian who perhaps has tried to tell you about the love of God. But even without people, God tries to demonstrate his love for you. The wonder of our, our created world, the wonder of a, a sunset, the wonder of a sunrise, being high in the mountains and looking out at the, the panorama that you see before you even the glory of, of humanity. I'm about to uh, become a grandfather once again and uh, I've, I've got three grandsons at the moment and the fourth one is, is on its way. Uh, he's going to be called Bobby. And every time I see a little baby, in, including my, my grandchildren, I think of the miracle of life, 
that out of a, a little egg that God creates personality a human being all my grandsons are different different personalities and yet they are loved by their parents they're loved by me they're loved by God and they've been created by God I think God tries to sh share his love to us and to convince us that he's there in that we all have a conscience. Now some conscience, people's conscience might be uh, more attuned than others, uh, but we, we all have a conscience. We all have that sense of right and wrong. Even if we, we cross the line, we have the sense of right and wrong. Why is that? Because God is right. And God made us in his image to know what is right. Now, the more we listen to what is right, the more we'll hear God. The more we ignore them, the further and further away that we get from God. Don't neglect your conscience. It's God's voice stirring in his heart towards you. There are many other ways that God uh, can prove himself to you. Uh, and, and this is just the third one. The fact that we have this inbuilt resentment or, or, or fear of death. And uh, there's been a lot of deaths in our nation recently because of COVID and sadly we've had to conduct va various uh, funerals uh, without the, the level of pastoral care we would normally put into a funeral. In fact, if you have lost a loved one and you've been to a funeral, you've, you've seen how different it, it, it is. Only uh, immediate family members can be there and unless they live in the same household, they have to be uh, socially distanced away from each other. Not, we're not able to, to hug and cuddle and, and, and care for each other in the way, the way what we, we, we would love to do. One of the things we want to do as a church when we're allowed uh, back uh, as it was before COVID lockdown is we want to have a, a memorial service for all those who have lost a loved one during this time where we might grieve together and think about the hope that is ours in glory. But whenever we're confronted with death, and particularly the death of a loved one, how many have said the words, uh, it's not fair, it's not right, it's, it's too soon, uh, why did they have to die? And there's this, this deep hurt that is inside us of, of, of grief at the sense of loss. And why is that? I think it's because God has put eternity in us, because we were, we were created to be eternal beings, and that physical death is the result of, of the fall or what we call sin that has entered into our lives. Without that we would we would live eternally with God on, on this earth but now we die and we, we sense that, that, that that's just not fair. Why should the personality of whom we are and who our loved ones just, just die and, and decay? Because we have that longing in our hearts for eternity because God has put eternity in us because we're created in his image in his image and he is eternal. But that's the, the bad news that we, we feel that loss. But the good news is that through Jesus Christ, who, who rose again on the third day at, at, at Easter, that we celebrate that at Easter, he's conquered death. And so if we believe in him, if we commit our lives to him, we can enter into that eternal realm. We can live again. We can enter into eternal life and into heaven. That's the gospel. And that is the good news. Some people say they believe in God but they can't believe in, in Jesus and was Jesus a real person? He's described in the Bible as, as the Son of God, the one who came to, to take away the sin of the world. Sin is an old-fashioned word but it just means uh, the damage, the damage that is in our hearts and in our lives, the things that we do that are, that are wrong, the things that we think uh, that are wrong. God is holy and God wants us to live holy lives and every time we live a life that is not holy then that is sin. Now some people say well I'm as good as anybody else but the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory or the standard of God. Now if I was uh, about to catch an I'm going to say an aeroplane that not many are flying these days but some are still flying. If I was due to catch an aeroplane and it flew uh, at let's say at 12 o'clock and I had to be uh, at the departure gate by 11.30 to board and uh, if I turned up at 11.50 then they wouldn't let me on the plane. I'd, I'd miss the boarding time by, by, by 20 minutes. I'll have to wait for another plane if there is another plane. I've, I've failed to meet 
the target of 11.30, I've turned up 20 minutes late at 11.50. But you may turn up at 11.35 and just be five minutes late. Now you're not as late as me, you, you've got 15 minutes on me, uh, but guess what? You'll still miss the plane. Even if you were the 11.31, one minute, you'll still miss the plane. And the Bible says all have sinned, have been damaged and fallen short of the glory of God. doesn't matter if we've fallen short by a little or by a lot. We've still missed the standard. We've still missed the target. We've still failed and fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus was alive. He is the Son of God. He came to pay the price of all of our sin. Although the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, it also says this. This is Romans 6 verse 23. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We celebrate his birth at Christmas, his miraculous birth at Christmas. But he grew to be a man just as you and I are human. He was 100% human, but he was also 100% God. But the Bible tells us in order to take away our sin, he gave up the powers of his divinity to come to earth as a baby, just as we were born on earth as a baby. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, so, so blood has to be shed. And Jesus shed his blood on the cross for every one of us, so that we may, may know the forgiveness of God. Now it all hangs on whether you believe that Jesus was really a person. Historically you cannot uh, refuse to acknowledge that Jesus really, really lived. And so the question is, what kind of a man was he? Was he a con man? Was he trying to con people into believing in God? Or was he a madman who, who was filled with his own uh, mental illness claiming to be the Son of God, claiming to be the one who could take away the sin of the world. Well, I guess at the end of the day, you've got to make your own decision about that, your own conclusion. The only way you can do that, I, I would suggest, is by reading the four Gospels. And you, you read those Gospels. And whenever you read what Jesus did and what Jesus said, ask yourself these questions. Is this action, are these words, the words of a con man? Are they the actions, are they the words of a madman? And if you conclude that they're not, then there's only one other confusion. Uh, there's only one other conclusion, not confusion, conclusion. And that he truly is the Son of God. And if he's the Son of God, then he came for you. He came to die for you so that you may have eternal life, that you may receive the peace that he offers that he may give you that, that sense of freedom that he offers you, that all your addictions would be broken. They may not be broken easily because you've had them for so long, but as you trust and, and follow Jesus, he'll set you free. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. All you need to do is accept him and believe in him. Right at the back of the book, before it tells you, about the things, the four things that we've looked at over the past four weeks to do, there's a prayer. I'm gonna pray that prayer now. I'm gonna pray it for you. I hope you can pray it with me. And if you do, this is you acknowledging your need of the good news of Jesus Christ. And as you pray this prayer, God will meet you, his Holy Spirit will fill you, and you will become a brand new person. That's the divine exchange. God takes away all the bad, and brings in holiness and goodness. It's a bit like uh, the story of Aladdin at Christmas, old lamps for new. If you give God your old life, he'll give you a brand new life and a brand new beginning. So let's pray the prayer. Dear Father God, I believe Jesus was the Son of God. I believe that he died in my place so that I could be forgiven and have a relationship with you. I believe he conquered death and rose again three days after he died on the cross. Jesus, I now want to accept the gift that you give me. I ask that you would 
Forgive me for all the things that I've done wrong, for all the things that I've thought that are wrong. I ask you to come into my life and I give you control of it that, might, that I might have a brand new start. And today I declare for the first time in my life that you are my Lord and my King. Jesus, I ask you to give me the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who you promised will help me to live the life that is best for me. Help me to begin to love with all of my heart, soul and strength and mind and to love those around me. Amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer and if you've been listening to what I've been speaking about over the past four weeks, you'll know this. The first thing you have to do now is tell someone, tell a friend, tell your partner, tell me, write to me, John at the well, rbc.org. Write to a friend, a Christian friend and tell them and they will let me know. Then pray regularly. Prayer is just a conversation. If you want to know more about prayer, just flick back some of our past recordings on YouTube where I spoke about prayer. I also spoke on another occasion about the Bible and about going to church. That's what I spoke on last week. Now at the moment we can't go to church, we're locked out, but we can lock into these services every Sunday and let our recordings be our church until we can gather together again. So that's it for this morning. God bless you. I hope you found, found it useful as we've gone through the whole of the booklet from beginning to end. And my prayer is that you will have accepted Jesus as your Lord and as your Saviour. And if you're already a Christian, then I pray that you will have recommitted your life to him, to prayer, to his word and to the fellowship of the church. Until next Sunday, God bless. <laughs>